Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labacan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show. Um, got a, uh, a show set up today. I'm going to be talking about a new pick to start the show. Then I'll have some uh, news news companies that were in the news to talk about and some uh, new reports coming out this weekend. So let's get right to it. The new pick that I'm going to talk about today is a company called Barksdale um, resources. And why I like this company is that they have the project that's right beside the Taylor Hermosa project. Um, now, some of you might remember that because uh, Arizona Mining, the company was taken over uh, for $2 billion. And we started covering it in my old reports at Allen Berry reports uh, when it was around a 50 cent stock. And uh, what led to that uh, takeover was they found a, a very large, um, one of the top 10 um, undeveloped um, CRD deposits in the world and ultimately were bought out for $2 billion. So it was a big winner uh, in my reports. And what makes Barksdale Resources quite exciting is that they have the project right beside the Taylor Hermosa project. Uh, it's called the Sunnyside Project, and um, it looks like, based on the historical drilling and uh, their modeling, that they have the extension of that Taylor deposit. Uh, and um, we'll talk about that in a little while. That's that uh, the Sunnyside Project in the Patagonia District of Arizona. And then they also have an interesting project down in Mexico called San Javier, which is an advanced copper pro deposit, um, has a resource of 419 million pounds of copper in measured and indicated, and that is an oxide project, and the resource is open for expansion. But the real big driver, I believe, is going to be their... Um, uh, their project Sunnyside, right beside Taylor Hermosa. They have 55 million shares out, uh, or 55 million market cap, 6 million in, uh, 6.6 .6 million in cash, uh, 1.5 uh, convertible debt, 80 million shares out. Okay, so here you can see some of the stock action. I'm, I'm going to talk about that later. Companies led by Rick Trotman, president, CEO, and director. I also uh, used to work with and Andy Pooler, smart guy, worked for a lot of majors, built a lot of mines. Um, Terry Ann Wilecki is another person that I've worked with. So I know some of the people that are involved with these com this company, and they're uh, very sharp people. Um, so here's the big story. Um, I'm going to... Here's the Sunnyside project in blue. And right here, you can see where the Taylor Hermosa deposit is. The Hermosa project, the Taylor deposit. Okay, so now you can see the outline in uh, in gray here, darker gray, uh, which is the Taylor deposit. And as you can see, it comes right up to the claim boundaries um, with Sunnyside. And uh, they also uh, and they have the uh, porphyry that drove the metals into that CRD system. And um, deposits don't care about claim boundaries. Uh, and so uh, I think that uh, they've got a good chunk of this Taylor deposit extends onto their property. Um, here again, you can see the uh, the priority target area is right there. And here is the, the big map that I think really tells this story. Uh, here you see the property boundary in blue. Um, here is the Taylor deposit, very large and uh, excellent grade deposit that will be a future mine. Um, here are some of the historical holes uh, that have been drilled, 17 meters of 1.3% copper, 17.2% lead zinc combined, 337 grams of silver, uh, another 38.4 meter intersection of 0.2% copper, 15% combined lead and zinc, 229 grams of silver, uh, 6.1 meters of 1.5% copper, 
0.9% lead zinc, 68 grams of silver, uh, 8.2 meters of 1.2% copper, 1% zinc, uh, lead, lead zinc combined, and 124 grams of um, silver. So as you can see, that uh, Taylor CRD uh, being developed by South 32 continues on to the bark stale um, uh, ground. Uh, they also have the porphyry, uh, 415 meters of 0.36% copper, 366 meters of 0.25% copper, 274 meters of 0.44% copper, 0.37% copper, uh, over 200 meters. So what it looks like is that the Sunnyside Porphyry is the heat engine uh, that drove the mineralization into this CRD. Um, so they talk about their significant exploration target. Um, both the SCARN and CRD target zone is right in here in between uh, the property boundary, those historical holes and the porphyry. Lots of room to uh, grow. Uh, I would go back to this because as you can see, um, you're looking at a pretty large area. Um, some have said that they could have half of that Taylor deposit CRD on their project. So if the other half was worth a couple billion, uh, I think that uh, their potential is pretty outstanding. Um, their current valuation uh, is, uh, as I said earlier, around 55 million. So lots of blue sky potential ahead for them. Um, and uh, I'm going to, as you can see in this slide, here is the pop property boundary. And here is the uh, the workings to build the mine at the Hermosa project. So you're looking at a couple hundred meters there. Um, and I think ultimately, as they get drilling and they show that there's a significantly large uh, CRD on their side of the property, um, that South 32 would be a likely candidate to take them over. If you're building your mining here, your mining operations here, uh, you would certainly want the uh, the extension of that as well. Okay, so um, uh, this is some information on their San Antonio project, 100% owned, fully firm, permitted for first pass drilling, coincident IP gravity and magnetic anomalies adjacent to historic mining district. Uh, this is their San Javier. I'm interested in this one as well because it looks like um, a very interesting uh, copper project. I'm a big fan of copper and uh, just think that there's not enough of it. And uh, what makes this particular property quite interesting is that um, you've got some very thick intersections of oxide copper here, 21 meters at 1.57 uh, grams of gold, 105 meters of 0.63% copper, 21 meters of uh, half a gram of gold, 51 meters at 0.32% uh, copper. And as you can see, lots of room to expand that copper oxide and good continuity of the mineralization. Uh, and it's open below the oxide zone. Um, so it has the uh, potential, the, the resource is open for expansion in most directions. Uh, very in interesting waste to ore ratio, very low at 0.25 to one, um, and great uh, recoveries of oxides, 85% uh, uh, copper. They have a PE underway. And again, you know, continuity is king and uh, they have some very nice continuity and it's open to expand. Um, so I'm, um, this story has caught my attention simply because of, I believe this is the big driver, uh, which is the uh, extension of the Taylor CRD, which was bought out for $2 billion Canadian. Um, it looks like it uh, continues onto their project in a significant way. And uh, the next big milestone for them will be permitting. 
Now, I'm just going to show you their stock chart. Um, uh, here it is. Uh, just give me a second to pull up. Uh, their stock symbol is BRO uh, on the Venture Exchange. Uh, here it is, Barksdale Capital. And um, as you can see, it's been a going sideways since November-ish. They had a pretty nice run here. Um, and then they've been going sideways and um, they have been trending upwards since early 2022. And, but then they're in this sideways action. Now, I've the reason for that sideways action is the company's been kind of going through a, uh, a, a long term process of permitting the drilling on their property. Um, and it looks like they're at the end of that process. They now have filings in uh, that looks like they're probably only going to be about four months away from having those drilling permits to test for the extension of the Taylor deposit. Now, when they get those permits and they do start drilling, I believe that they will uh, have significant hits and that will drive the valuation much higher. In the meantime, as they're waiting for that, um, I believe that you're going to have a good opportunity uh, to get this uh, stock at a very good valuation. It will probably trend upwards as they get closer to the uh, getting the permit. Um, so it's something that I think you have a little bit of time to um, position yourself in. Uh, and uh, and in anticipation of a drill program that I think will be very successful uh, in in that, I mean, basically, if they had the drill permits in hand right now and having this extension of the Taylor deposit uh, coming over onto their property in the direction of the of the uh, heat engine for that uh, entire CRD mineralization, uh, I would believe that their stock would be much higher valuation. So uh, that's why I've decided in, in anticipation of them getting that permit, um, I believe that they will get that permit. And ultimately, this will be a big winner um, in, the, uh, in the coming months, uh, simply because of the uh, quality of the asset that they that is right beside them and uh, the likelihood that they can uh, extend that Taylor deposit significantly onto their property. And they probably have a buyer uh, in South 32 uh, that has already shown that they're not afraid to open the checkbook in a significant way uh, when they bought Arizona Mining and uh, paid $2 billion for that uh, Taylor deposit. Um, I, I think is a very good sign that uh, uh, there could be a, a, a significant takeover of this company in the next year to two years. Uh, and what will lead the, the valuation forward will be drilling for this uh, extension of the Taylor deposit. Okay, so now I wanted to go into some news releases. Uh, one of the first news releases that I wanted to talk about is Nine Mile announces drilling begins on its Nine Mile Brook VMS project. What is very exciting about this uh, Taylor, I mean, uh, Nine Mile Brook VMS is they've already found, a, a, well, first of all, uh, to put it into context, this project is located in the Bathurst Mining Camp which is the third most important VMS mining camp worldwide. And um, uh, it has been looked at for many years, but these guys are finding new massive sulfide occurrences. And um, uh, the one that they're drilling at as of today's announcement is this Nine Mile Brook lens. Uh, this is a very thick lens. Um, it has a, a very high grade, over 10% copper in it, as well as zinc, lead, silver, uh, gold. And um, when you get a thick intersection like that right at surface uh, of, uh, of uh, very high grades, it's indicative of what the source of where that came from. And that's specifically what this current drilling 
that's underway as of today is all about is chasing that um, that uh, source of this thick and high grade lens. When you get thickness like that in the top of a VMS system, uh, it's also an indicator that the source of where that came from is big. And in the case of the grades that they've already seen, that it all should also be high grade. Now, also interesting in that project is that um, in the immediate er area around uh, where they found that massive sulfide lens are several other geophysical targets. Now, you know, a lot of times when it comes to geophysics, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt because, um, you know, a, a lot of geophysical anomalies turn out to be duds. In the case of what they're doing is they're working with a company called EarthX, and EarthX is one of these big data companies that uses algorithms to um, filter out the geophysical noise and vector into where they should find massive sulfides in this case. And uh, <clears throat> that's what they did to find this lens at Nine Mile Brook. And they also use that same formula and uh, 20 kilometers away where they found their California Lake VMS. Um, and again, uh, you know, they've, they're finding new massive sulfides in a well-known uh, massive sulfide uh, VMS camp. And, uh, and, and they use that same Earth X to generate the targets at California Lake, which is 20 kilometers away from Nine Mile Brook. Uh, and uh, so they're, the quality of work that they're doing with this uh, big, using big data to filter out geophysical noise has proven itself uh, uh, twice now. And uh, so I put a, um, a high probability of success on many of the other geophysical targets that are in close proximity to Nine Mile Brook as well as on their other projects. So very excited about this drilling that's underway right now uh, around that Nine Mile Brook lens. Let's take a quick look at their uh, stock chart. Um, there it is. Uh, as you can see, they had a pretty good run when they announced that Nine Mile Brook stuff, uh, the lens information. Uh, they had another run when they announced the California Lake stuff. They've been kind of going sideways as they've been gearing up to get drilling aggressively around this uh, nine mile brook lens, which is now happening. Um, but a very bullish trend considering, you know, how the uh, junior market has been over the last, well, especially in 2022, um, you know, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. And uh, with the drilling that's ongoing right now around that Nine Mile Brook lens, I believe that they have an excellent uh, opportunity or potential uh, to see some new uh, um, highs, higher highs uh, in, the, uh, in the immediate future. All right. So the next company I'm going to talk about is Ridgeline. Uh, Ridgeline announced this here. Ridgeline Minerals announces widespread carlin type alteration and gold mineralization from, from drill results at the SWIFT project in Nevada. This is uh, located in the Cortez Mining District of the Battle Mountain Eureka trend in Nevada. Uh, it's operated by Nevada Gold Mines, which is the joint venture between Barrick and Newmont. Uh, it's they went through an option. Uh, uh, the Nevada gold mines has an earn in agreement that was signed in September 2021 uh, with new uh, Nevada gold mines holding an option to spend US $20 million in qualifying expenditures over five years to earn an initial 60% stake in the project. Uh, new Nevada gold mines has spent a total of 4.9 million on the project to date uh, and has now uh, satisfied the minimum guaranteed work commitment of US $4 million ahead of scheduled 
deadline of December 31, 2023. So they're, they're really rolling up their sleeves. So let's see why they're rolling up their sleeves. Uh, they announced three wide spaced, approximately one kilometer framework core holes were completed uh, in September and January 2023. Um, and uh, it intersected the lower plate carbonate host rocks between 570 to 823. Uh, this is important rock package for these to kind of deposits in the Battle Mountain Eureka trend. They had widespread intervals of carlin type alteration, anomalous gold intersecting both holes with individual gra samples grading up to 2.72 grams per ton of gold. Highlight intercept included 37.2 meters of 0.29 grams per ton gold, 0.26 grams per ton of silver, 48 meters of 0.45 grams per ton gold, and 0.98 meters. So why um, this project is uh, seeing such aggressive work is that um, uh, they're they're proving up a a, a a theory that there are those correct kind of rocks down there that are mineralized and uh, and are important for these kind of projects. So Chad Peters, who's Richline's president, CEO, and director, commented, and I quote, making a deep gold discovery in Nevada can be a time and capital intensive project process, and we're fortunate to have our partners, Nevada Gold Mines, applying their impressive track record of discoveries to the SWIFT project. It was well known that large Carlin-type gold deposits tend to form kilometer-scale gold and trace element halos around them, and today's results suggest the significant gold system is present at SWIFT. Holes two and three were drilled 800 meters apart and still return the strongest lower plate gold intercepts at the project to date. These results add geochemical and structural pieces to the geological model and will help future exploration programs vector towards potentially higher grade zones. Nevada Gold Mine is planning on conducting additional framework drilling in 2023, and we look forward to updating our shareholders as the project uh, as the program progresses. End quote. So they've confirmed that there's gold, the presence of strong Carlin type alteration with broad zones of decalcification, elevated trace elements, and thick zones of anomalous gold, including up to 2.7 grams per ton of gold. So um, these big alteration packages, when the fluids that contain the gold make their way into the country rock, it chemically alters that rock. And so when you have a big alteration package uh, and mineralization, it's suggestive of a large gold mineralizing system. And when you're in the right kind of rocks, uh, and there you say the host rocks, a consistent depth to lower plate host rocks at targetable depths between 500 to 800 meters. Uh, they also talk about the structures. A complex structural fra framework dominated by low angle thrust faults that appear to control alteration and gold mineralization at SWIFT. So these uh, structures are what enable or is the path of least resistance or the cracks in the earth that allow those fluids to make their way up into the uh, right kind of rock packages. And uh, and then you want to have mineralization. So they're checking off all those boxes. And that's, I believe, why um, uh, Nevada Gold Mines has been so um, significantly aggressive uh, in, in uh, doing the drilling. So I'm going to go back to the news release because... Um, uh, they also talk about their Selena project back on January 24th. I've done some interviews with um, their uh, their management in the past and um, Chad Peters. And um, you can find that on my YouTube channel at uh, Rocks and Stocks News. Just do a search for Rocks and Stocks News. And we, we've talked about this um, uh, Selena project in the past. And uh, they're getting some very exciting things at their chinchilla zone 
6.1 meters grading 480 grams per ton of silver, 12% lead, 6.4% zinc, and a sniff of gold. Uh, and they had a high grade uh, part of that, which was a half a meter grading 1,793 grams per ton of silver. Uh, and um, so they've got two really good projects on their hands. And um, um, one being advanced by quite aggressively by the uh, joint venture of Barrick and Newmont. So here's their stock chart. As you can see, it's been improving of late. Um, it went through, oh, I got to change my uh, settings here. Sorry. I'll pull up the 200 day as the second. Okay. So as you can see here, the stock has been improving since around um, late October and uh, been creating some higher lows and uh, and had a pretty nice blast off there. Uh, and now the it has just recently went through a, fifth, um, a golden cross. Uh, I believe that the company's got a lot of uh, catalysts ahead of it from both the uh, SWIFT project and Selena. Um, and uh, so I think that you're going to see this trend uh, moving much higher. Um, so I'm a fan of Ridgeline and uh, do your homework on that one. Okay, so before we close, I wanted to Suma Silver. Um, I recently made them a official pick in my reports. Suma, and they had this news release out of, uh, yesterday. Suma Silver intersects wide vein zones in aggressive step out holes at the high grade silver gold Magolan project in New Mexico. Um, some of the highlights four more holes have intersected the queen vein marked by intermittent to continuous quartz carbonate veins and breaches over meters to tens of meters with local zones of silver bearing sulfides. Drilling focused on expansion around the historic consolidated mine and it continues to intersect strong visible inner mineralization. Um, they're not doing these uh, very close uh, spaced step outs. This one was 100 meters. 75 meters, 150 meters. Uh, the mineralized zone remains open in, in multiple directions and now covers a straight length of 500 meters with some of the strongest visually mineralized holes intersected on the edges of the current drilling pattern. Core photos of the uh, queen vein intersections from all 15 holes drilled to date are available on the company's website here. Let's pull up and take a look at some of those core. Um, as you can see, uh, some nice looking core there. Uh, this was from the Feb 16th. So this is new core that they um, are seeing what they like. I always like it when companies wanna show off their core uh, because it tells you that they believe that that core has the right kind of mineralization. That, that was hole fi uh, 15, here's hole 14. Um, some more excellent mineralization in there. And uh, uh, there you go, um, hole 13 also has some excellent mineralization. And again, here's 12, uh, very good looking stuff. And uh, 11, so they're getting lots of the right kind of looking core. 10 also had some good looking stuff as well, as you can see in this image. Uh, hole nine, just a couple of uh, hits there. Hole eight, as you can see, this company is very happy to show off their core. And I always find that uh, as very um, uh, exciting. Drilling continues with three rigs in full operation until the end of February, testing that consolidated extension target. Work is just beginning at the Mogollon project with the first target representing only 1% of the total vein and structure strike length present at the project. Galen McNamara, who is their CEO state, and I quote, Aggressive step out drilling continues to cut broad zones of visually striking vein material, often within several stacked horizons. We are now beginning to understand the potential of this tar first target, but are nowhere near understanding 
the potential of the Magolan project as a whole. We are developing additional low surface impact targets through extensive 3D geological modeling and look forward to sharing them in due course along with assay results from the ongoing drill program, end quote. And so down here, they've got some of the highlights, uh, 100 meters or 16 meters at 444 grams per ton silver equivalent, uh, 207 grams of silver, three grams of gold. See that news release on February 1st. I talked about that in, um, in, my, uh, new, uh, in my report. Uh, you can see some banding here that suggests that this is a long-lived system. Uh, very exciting stuff, as you can see in here as well. Um, examples of mineralite core. Note that these photos are not intended to be representative of broader mineralization. So they give you one of those um, uh, um, disclaimers. Um, here's the consolidated mine stopes. And uh, here's where they're expanding on the mineralization and it remains open in virtually every direction. Um, <clears throat> and nice to see that they're starting to get some very good continuity at this level. And uh, they've got holes pending, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then uh, they've got more drilling underway. And uh, so over the next few months, this company is going to have excellent news flow. Let's take a look at their chart. SSVR is their stock symbol. There's Suma Silver. Surprisingly enough, it's kind of weakened off as they've been putting out very good um, uh, uh, drilling information. And that's kind of indicative of what's been happening in the uh, in the uh, precious metal stocks of late over the last couple of weeks, they've been correcting as the US dollar has been strengthening. Um, I think that the trend that had the US dollar going down aggressively since topping in September and the price of gold and silver going up uh, are, uh, and in short term, the US dollar has gained some strength and the gold price has gained some weakness. Uh, I think those are going to reverse. And when they do, a company like this uh, with a modest valuation, lots of uh, pending results and a pretty good looking trend, even with this, it looks like a lower low, or I mean a higher low um, uh, and a golden cross here that has weakened off. But I think that can turn around very quickly and will uh, with Suma Silver. Okay, so now I wanted to mention that um, I have a show that I'm working on um, putting out in the next day or two on Dynasty Gold. Dynasty Gold is a sponsor of my shows. Uh, they're into an orogenic gold system. Uh, they had released some Bonanza grades recently that saw this big spike. Uh, lots of hot money came in on those bonanza grades up to 1.5 meters of 246 grams per ton of gold. Uh, hot money went out, and then it's been improving of late. Uh, went through a golden cross here. The trajectory of this move on the 50-day moving average certainly suggests that there's a lot higher to go. This is kind of a... Um, They've reached a seminal moment in the exploration of an orogenic gold system. And uh, I'm gonna, in the report that I'm putting out in the next day or two, I'm gonna show some cross sections and, uh, and the grade distribution on three particular holes that looks like they've not only tagged into the Bonanza, high grade to Bonanza zone, very, very close to surface, only a couple hundred meters down, in an orogenic gold system, that means that they're they're at a seminal moment for the exploration of an orogenic gold system. Um, but uh, um, I think they've got something special on their hands. They have a very modest valuation, and uh, I think it's going to go a lot higher. And in that show that I put out uh, in the next day or two, I'll more thoroughly explain why I think that will happen. Um, this weekend, I'm going to be putting out some um, 
a, a series of reports. And what I'm going to talk about on those reports is um, uh, the trends that I'm seeing in the U.S. dollar. Uh, let me uh, just pull it up here. Um, trading view. Uh, search markets here. We want the DXY on launch chart. So as you can see, the U.S. dollar has been going down uh, or in a downtrend since September. Um, it's recently been um, um, uh, getting some strength to trade slightly above the 50-day moving average. I'll talk about why I think that this is the most important trend, not this short-term action. Um, and uh, then I'll also be talking about um, uh, gold and some of the other metals that I follow closely. But I, here's why I follow those metals so closely. As you can see, as the U.S. dollar has been gaining strength, uh, short-term strength, the gold price has went the other direction, uh, which it always does. I mean... The, correl the correlation between the action, the inverse action between the U.S. dollar and the gold price is very important. As you can see here, as the U.S. dollar was correcting, gold was moving up quite aggressively. And again, I believe that this is the trend that's important, not this short-term weakness here. Uh, and I think what that's done is created... Um, some some significant weakness in the gold stocks, which is kind of a another topic I'll talk about this weekend, is that the, the sentiment and the conviction for gold stocks, it's certainly improved here, uh, but then the action here has them back down to valuations when gold was back, um, you know, uh, much lower than it is right now. Um, and so it's given back a lot of sort of it's taken two steps forward and uh, or three steps forward and two steps back, which I think gives you some phenomenal opportunities for investors uh, in this sector. And including the trends that I'll talk about, I'm also going to be talking about my current shopping list of companies that I follow very closely in the reports. Uh I'm also going to be putting out a report on a, a written report on a new sponsor um, that is uh, joining my uh, show sponsorship program. Uh, I'm very excited about this company. I'm not going to name them today. Uh, just stay tuned for that uh, that report, written report that I'll put out announcing them becoming a new sponsor. And I'll give you the reasons why I've um uh, included them as a new sponsor and uh, why I'm bullish on the company. Um, and uh, stay tuned for that one because uh, this company's in Nevada. They've got an excellent project. They're in the midst of a 10-hole 10 10 drill program. Uh, they've already released some important information about their first hole, and those results are pending. So I think this company in addition to having a very modest valuation for a, a Nevada gold project that had seen uh, high-grade um, uh, production in, around World War II, bonanza-grade production, um, and uh, they've done some drilling underneath that to show that that mineralization continues at depth and um, uh, are deeper than uh, the, uh, the historical mine working. So I'm I'm very bullish on this company and stay tuned for that report. All righty. So as always, my shows are for information purposes only. Um, you know, whether or not these companies are suitable for you requires you to speak with your financial advisors, do your homework, um, understand the companies that you're uh, considering or own shares in. It's important to be well-informed uh, about these companies, because I think that the well-informed investors historically in this sector are the ones that do very well. On that note, have a great day and we will talk to you soon.